It is senior day, the final regular season game, the final game of the year for these two clubs, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. Somebody's walking out of here with their one and only SEC victory. It's senior day, 22 seniors being celebrated here inside the walls of Neyland Stadium. The Vols and the Commodores for the 111th time. Dave Neal alongside former Georgia All-American Matt Stinchcomb. And Matt, this season has not played out like these two clubs thought it would, especially the way the season started. You had one team at 3-0. and You had this Tennessee team at 3-1, and and then both of their seasons came off the rails. Let's start with Vanderbilt. Where did they go wrong? Well, they started out hot, as you mentioned, and offensively seemingly had made some strides. It's the Alabama game. You get blanked 59 to nothing, and then five consecutive losses before they're able to get back on the win column. I think that's the ultimate point where you saw a departure from what could have been a promising season. And for Tennessee, it's almost the same story for them. I mean, three and one, and then, man, it just went downhill in a hurry. You know, they squeaked out another victory on the back end of that game versus Florida. And that last second loss to the Gators on the road, I think you took a team that was already fragile from a confidence standpoint, and you kind of crushed what was left of it. They did not play well the next week versus UMass. And ever since then, you've seen a team slowly unraveling, ultimately to the point where they lost their head coach and now with an interim coach and Brady Hope. Yeah, hanging that over their head, the Butch Jones situation certainly didn't help things around this football team, around the athletic department, but it is what it is, and they're playing football here in Neyland Stadium. Vandy won the toss, they defer, so Tennessee gets it first. And the opening kickoff taken by Ty Chandler, and he's out to the 15 and push back. Now for Tennessee, this offense, he'd say one dimensional, but John Kelly is their dude. Well, if you needed one dimension, this is the guy <laughs> that you want to be a part of it. You know, you talk about a playmaker, an engine for an offense, and it's John Kelly. He's got excellent balance and vision, but more than anything else, he's a versatile contributor to this offense. Leads this team in rushing and in receptions, only Saquon Barkley who for the bulk of this season was thought to be the Heisman front runner at Penn State is the only other running back that can say that no one means more to this to this offense than John Kelly. First meeting between these two happened in 1892. That's how long this has been going on. John Kelly with the handoff off the right side. Jared Garantano, the redshirt freshman, will be under center today. We expect him to get uh, if not all the snaps, the majority of them today, Will McBride back in uniform, the uh, true freshman on the sidelines. But for Garantano, you see the numbers on him, 61 and a half completion percentage last week, 13 of 23, 239, a touchdown and an interception in just horrible conditions, especially in that second half against LSU. Well, a guy that's having to go through kind of the on the job training, forced into service at quarterback in the difficult circumstances. A lot of new faces along that offensive front and young contributors at the skill positions. Garantano, good clean pocket to the wide side of the field. Pass is caught. Brandon Johnson with that reception at the 37. That'll be a first down after a pickup of 18. Nice time for Garantano. Hasn't been the case for the bulk of the season. Only four rushing, leaps six in in protection. Nice pocket for Garantano to get the ball downfield to one of his favorite targets in Brandon Johnson, who has proven to be a very reliable receiver amongst those guys on the perimeter. Seven receptions last year for Johnson, now 32 here in 2017. Chandler in the game and running back, couple of tight ends on a first down and 10. Here's the tall sweep coming near side. To midfield and then some. So a good run for Chandler, a pickup of 16. Down on the field, once again with us is Dawn Davenport. Let's join her now. Hey, Dawn. Dave, you mentioned the quarterback situation. The balls are finally a bit healthier there. True freshman Will McWright is back and available after missing last week against LSU. Coach Hogue told me, though, that this is Jared Garantano's game. There's no specific plan in place to play both quarterbacks. Now, remember, Garantano was battling an ankle injury. He was a full go in practice this week. Guys looked good to go in warm-ups as well. All right, we'll see if that is indeed the case with Jared Garantano. He will spin out to the left, drop it off underneath to Kelly. He has hit around the... 43 yard line pickup of five Ryan White comes up to make the play for the Commodores. Mandy's defensive woes have just been unheralded really. I mean the things that they have gone through this year they have allowed in SEC games 
over 45 points a game. It's been a defense that really has let down an offense that's much more improved from a season ago, especially in the passing element. And you can say underperforming, there's no question about it. Without a Zach Cunningham in their lineup, you would have thought with Ladarius Wiley, with Ryan White, you know, even with some of the playmakers they have up front, Oren Burks, Charles Wright, and they just have not been enough to pick up the slack. Carlin fills a me. He has a first down, and he's had a bounce at the 25-yard line. That's a 17-yard pickup. Well, it's just impeccable balance and execution so far from this Tennessee offense. Phil me this time able to capture the edge. The run so far by Tennessee early on in this game, in this opening possession, they've been able to capture the edge repeatedly to both sides of the line of scrimmage. And incidentally, important to note for Tennessee, They've been able to slide Trey Smith inside to his natural guard position because Brett Kendrick has returned to the lineup at left tackle. They'll fake it to Kelly over the middle. Pass is caught down inside the five yard line goes Ethan Wolf. He'll pick up 20. Off the heavy play action. We just mentioned Trey Smith moving to his guard position. He pulled. Nice job in protection, and it's just enough to buy time. Oren Burks in coverage versus Ethan Wolf, the leading receiver for this Tennessee offense. And a very effective opening possession so far. Three for three from Jarrett Garantano. First and goal from the five. Garantano lost it up to the corner, and it is dropped. They were looking for Wolf. Oren Burks, the linebacker, covering the senior tight end, playing his final game in the big orange jersey. Well, they motioned Ethan Wolf was attached at the end of the line of scrimmage, motioned him out. You end up with Oren Burks out there in space, and Wolf looked a little bit hobbled that time after that throw. You see him, it looked like his left ankle came up a little bit gimpy on that fade route to the corner of the end zone. Second and goal. Here's Kelly. He'll take it inside the five down to the two and a half yard line. Charles Wright first one there for the Commodores. This Tennessee offense averaging just 19 and a half points a game. That is dead last in this conference. 118th in the country. In the red zone this year they have scored 25 of 32 possessions 78 percent on the year. And that's an area obviously you have to improve on that number. You got to come away with points when you get into the scoring position. And even if you want to throw in field goals for 78%, that's not nearly enough. You have to put points up on the scoreboard and on a third down, they want to come away with six here. They'll throw to the corner of the end zone again. And is it caught? Oh, yes, it is. Marquez Callaway. What a grab by Callaway. Give him six, and the balls are on the board. What a one-handed grab. Well, they tried the bay to the corner of the end zone to Ethan Wolf, and he narrowly missed the catch. How do you defend that? You got Trey Herndon right there. Their hand fighting. He gets his hands up there. That's a fantastic gloves catch. Right there from Marquez Callaway. Boy, did he explode on the scene on the front end of this season versus Georgia Tech? Was by far his best game from a production standpoint. Went north of 100 yards, had a rough outing last week. Had a big catch there. Number eight, half the distance. We play the try. James Carter, our referee today. What a drive for this Tennessee team to get this game started. Nine plays, 85 yards. They show tremendous balance all the way down the field. Able to run the football well. Great job, five and four. I mean, you can't see anything better. It appears that Derek Mason may have called a timeout. 
on the other side of that offsides penalty. If you take a look at that catch again, excellent extension by Callaway. Such a big physical receiver, 6'2", and showing that catch radius, he used every inch of it. Is there any question that that's a touchdown? No. no. I mean, that is six points. So there was no timeout. Derek Mason just wanted to talk to the official for a moment. Got his response, and the point after is up and good by Medley. So Callaway with the catch, maybe of the year for Tennessee, puts him on the board seven to nothing. Garantano went four or five, 45 yards on that drive. Give us a chance to head to the studio and get an update. Well, Dave, 7 0 also the score on the Plains in the Iron Bowl. Little jump pass to Nate Craig Myers. Auburn strikes first. 95 yard, 12 play drive. 7 zip Tigers. I think there's a little bit more at stake in that game than we have here. <laughs> you know what's crazy is as big as that, as that game is, certainly in the state of Alabama and amongst those two fan bases. Well, only the second time since they split the two divisions has it been a kind of a play-in game from a championship standpoint. The other year was 13 when they had the, uh, the infamous, from an Alabama perspective anyway, kick six. Obviously, Auburn able to play for a national title that year. I'll tell you what, you talk about Alabama going on a nice opening drive. Tennessee did the same thing. Right down the football field. You mentioned nice pocket, moved the pocket at times, allowed Garantano to get on, on the edge. A couple of touches, fills me getting carries as well in a very balanced possession. And that kick will sail through the end zone. And as Vanderbilt's offense takes the field, our last chance in his career to watch Ralph Webb perform. Ralph Webb is a guy that can help set the pace on offense. He's their workhorse. This is a kid who plays with a chip on his shoulder. And Ralph Webb will be making his 49th consecutive start, over 4,000 career rushing yards, ninth in SEC history. And he just has to have a mediocre day to move all the way up to seventh in conference history. You know, it's a shame he's been banged up and playing behind an offensive line that's been shaky this year because he just hadn't had the kind of season we've seen the past few years. Still very dangerous. Elijah Lipscomb, first catch. He'll get it out to the 20. Nine yard line. There's Kyle Shermer, and he has had a heck of a season. Talk about a, a guy that certainly increased his production. 22 touchdown passes this year, one away from setting the school record. He's tied it this year, but what's been the difference with Kyle this year? You no, know, I think part of it has been the offensive philosophy. You know, last week, last year rather, we kept hearing from the coaching staff doing this team. They want to open things up. I think the receiving core has improved. And part of it has been a market shift towards calling more passes. Only 15 rushing attempts a game for Ralph Webb, who's typically a workhorse. Offside. Defense number one, unabated. Five yard penalty, second down. That's Kongbo getting a little head start, but that'll certainly make this play call a little bit easier for Vanderbilt as it'll make it second down in less than a yard. And yeah, no, they, they've taken this out. You know, they won't allow centers to kind of do that head bob to initiate the snap. And it looked like Bruno Reagan, he was he, checking to see the snap indicator from Kyle Shermer. And he popped that head up real quickly. And that was enough to trigger Combo, who was itching to get upfield. Surefield goes in motion, but they'll hand it off to Webb, who cuts it back. He'll have the first down. Out to the 38-yard line. Micah Abernathy gets credit for the tackle, but Ralph Webb, 5'10", 202 pounder, out of Gainesville, Florida. He was an unheralded guy, snuck out of the state of Florida, you know, right there in the backyard of the Gators. Felt a bit snubbed. And for him to climb into the top 10 all time rushing, you're talking about some tremendous names, some all timers, the Darren McFadden's, Herschel Walker's, the Bo Jackson's of this conference's history. Over the middle, pass is caught, first down at the 40 yard line. CJ Duncan, the senior out of Montgomery, Alabama, picks up 22. It looked like maybe Elliott Berry was a little bit early. 
Might have caught him in the neutral zone regardless. Excellent pickup by the Vanderbilt offensive front. And Shermer on target downfield to get to one of his favorite targets in C.J. Duncan. Sherfield, Elijah Lipscomb. Talk about the way Shermer has performed the last four games, averaging 303 yards passing. That is an impressive evolution of this offense. Play fake it to Webb. Shermer rolls and fires pass caught again by Sherfield. Senior with his 45th catch of the year picks up 13. Sherfield's a guy they've been waiting to come on, and this has been his season. Nice route, pressure upfield, get Emmanuel Mosley in coverage out of his break, and then head towards that sideline. And a great job by Kyle Shermer once again, who's on target early. Both these offenses moving the pocket, but even when these quarterbacks have been dropped back, there's been time to deliver strikes. Here's Webb. Cuts it back. Big hole. Ralph Webb inside the 15 down to the 12. Webb with a big run. On that note, let's go down to Dawn. Guys, you talk about Webb being the model of durability. Well, coming out of high school, coaches told him he was too small to play in the SEC. Vandy was his only SEC offer. I talked to him this week. He said that is what's fueled him his entire career. He felt underrated, undervalued, and that's where that big chip on his shoulder, that running style, comes from. He will take a breather on this first down. And this Kari Blassen game will enter at running back. Single setback. Shermer. He'll throw it out of bounds. He sent Marcus to tie it in in the back of the end zone. Had Blassen game kind of underneath. That went heavy play action and nobody bit. Great job in coverage. Nowhere to go with the football. Be smart. You're in the red zone, throw this ball away. I think part of this, we talk about Kyle Shermer and what the difference is for him this year. It's a maturation and its ability to be aware in game of what he should do and where he should go with the football. That's a smart throw away in this field position. Vanderbilt averaging 23 points a game. That's 12th in the league, 104th in the country. Here goes Webb. He's inside the 10, down to the 9. That'll bring up a third down. Seen Bandy use some heavy formation sets. This time, an extra offensive lineman in there, Cole Clemens. Number 74 was lined up at left tight end. They've tried a couple of power looks. You see Clemens hustling his way off the field. We're in the extra lineman. You never want to run from the opposite hash. That's a haul. <laughs> See, that's something I would have never picked up. But of oh, course. yeah, hit the oxygen when you get <laughs> yeah. over there, big boy, because if you convert right here, you might be back in on a goal line set. This time they emptied the backfield on third down. Got to get it inside the three-yard line for a first down. Or just go to the end zone touchdown. Vanderbilt, nine yards away, C.J. Duncan. I would say that was a pretty good answer by this Vanderbilt offense. You couldn't ask for a better answer. You get your running game going, a couple of power attitude runs, your quarterback proven to be on target, nice protection from the offensive front. C.J. Duncan, multiple catches on this opening possession for Vanderbilt. And the Commodores now are on the board, able to answer Tennessee's opening score. Tommy Openshaw to attempt the point after. Shermer on that drive, four, five, 50 yards, and the touchdown. C.J. Duncan with his fifth of the year. So Vanderbilt answers back with a nice drive of their own, and Kyle Shermer gets another touchdown pass and a school record in the process. Dari Noka in studio, back to that Iron Bowl. Auburn recovered a Jalen Hurts fumble, drove it down inside the five-yard line. Then Jarrett Stidham couldn't handle the snap. Deron Payne recovers Bama ball down seven zip. Winner helms the West, Matt Stinchcomb. You got, hey, turnovers can determine who ultimately helms that West Division championship. 
which one of them ultimately helms it's going to be very very important because <laughs> if it's auburn alabama might still squeak their way into the cfp and then you can helm the national championship freddie hoke the interim coach taking over for butch jones you and i were talking it's senior day and it's got to be tough guy hadn't been here very long and he's got to try to get these guys motivated ready to play you know it's just a really awkward situation for a lot of folks and you know there's so much talk maybe tomorrow maybe you know who knows Monday Tuesday the new coach will be announced but for Brady Hoke he comes here and he gets assigned the interim head coaching tag it just uh, was a train wreck as the season went along yeah it has to be difficult and, and you could see him you know as those seniors were taking the field it's difficult you know for both parties you know here's a guy hadn't been on campus that long didn't recruit these kids Came in to coach the defensive line. And obviously he's sat in that head coach's chair before, recognizes the challenge in front of him. This week, even, some unique challenges with the dismissal of Jawan Jennings, and yet got his team ready to play. Tirantano will throw on the run, and that pass is caught. Brandon Johnson out to the 45 and a first down. They'll actually spot it back at the 43, 18-yard pickup. You see multiple times we've seen in this game where they've done a good job kind of dividing the field, moving the pocket, giving Garantano, Kyle Shermer on a couple instances two multiple options to that side of the field. That time three receivers on different levels, different places to go with the football. Brady Hoke made a couple of decisions. Had to went for it on fourth down, one he said he'd like to have back. Well, that's his MO. That's kind of his personality. He's going to be aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, catch and a big hit, and Johnson has come out to play today inside Neyland Stadium. 32 more yards. Well, they caught Vanderbilt on a double move. Just a little stutter and go, and it was more than enough. See a little bit of a pump fake, a shoulder fake from Garantano. That ball held just a little bit. He almost looked as if Safety help was going to be able to get over the top from Ladarius Wiley, but you got a matchup versus Ryan White out there. You had to like that coming out, and the double move was more than enough for the big passing play. Three catches, 68 yards for Johnson. They'll go on the ground here to Kelly. No Don game. Kelly Let's go down to Dawn. Well, Dave, you were talking about Brady Hoke. I talked to some of the seniors, and they pointed out the energy that he has brought to this team in a time when they really needed it. They said it's contagious. The team feeds off of him. I just saw some of that energy down here, Hoke, with a, a pretty inspired conversation with his linebackers and his defensive line. Yeah, he's all football coach. Talking to him this week. I mean, he's got the... He's buttoned up yeah, now. Yeah. He wasn't going to give you much, no. that's for sure. Head he coach at Ball State, San Diego State, Michigan. Was a D.C. and D.N. coach at Oregon last year. I'll say this. Larry Scott's done a great job on both of these possessions changing it up. Now, part of it's because his offense is executing well. That time, a design QB draw, and the defense just splits wide open. Vanderbilt, lucky that that didn't break for even more yardage. Both of these defensive units, we talk about Brady Hoke, you know, with an inspired conversation with his defense. You see offensive coordinator there, Larry Scott, down on the field early in the season, was up in the booth. But he's had an excellent feel so far in this game of where to go with the football. Durantano. Lost it in the air, looking for Kelly. Flag comes in as Kelly was held, trying to come back for the football. Well, we mentioned how much of a weapon Kelly is. I, you know, I wonder about that flag. That ball was so underthrown. Garantano got hit as he released it. You know, oftentimes you see uncatchable as overthrows, but that ball was so underthrown. Pass interference. Defense number 40. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So that'll make it first and goal from the seven. You'll see where this ball lands. You'll see Garantano, his arms hit right there as he throws. From Odangbo there, and that ball was so underthrown. 
And you see Kelly throws his arms up, and yeah, for sure there was contact with the ball in the air. But that ball was about four or five yards short. Vanderbilt taking a timeout as Tennessee is knocking on the door again. We'll step aside as well. Tied at seven, but Tennessee is inside the 10-yard line looking at a first and goal here in the first quarter. Derek Mason and company making the trip from Nashville to Knoxville. And, well, this has been um, just a tough year for not only the head coach, but the defensive coordinator. That last touchdown they gave up, by the way, set a conference record for most points allowed in SEC games. They've given up 329. Actually, Mississippi Oof. State gave up 329 in 03. Yeah, that's that's not a, a record you ever want to be associated with. And the difficulty is, of course, is that as you mentioned, not only head coach, but defensive coordinator. And it's surprising because in 2016, that was more than a promising season. Got to bowl eligibility and taken over the reins solidly on the defensive side of the ball. Here goes Chandler. He gets it down to the one yard line, a gain of six. If you're a Tennessee fan and you're looking for bright spots in this roster, you just saw two true freshmen involved on that play. Trey Smith pulling from his guard position to lead Ty Chandler up the football field. A lot of young guys contributing. As you see big Trey Smith, that's one of the best offensive linemen in the conference. Not just for freshmen, for anybody. He has played incredibly well. The only lineman that's made all 11 starts. There goes Kelly right over the top from one yard out. And Tennessee has taken a 13 to 7 lead. We well, credit the big pass play to Brandon Johnson to get Tennessee down the field. And then a great job by the front getting movement. The ball's been out on the perimeter. You're knocking on the door. And then you do just enough up front to knock that defensive line down and give your playmaker and John Kelly room to go over the top. Medley's point after is up and good. Well, Brandon Johnson's been a big reason Tennessee has put a couple of touchdowns on the board. We talk about his consistency, explosive playmaking, add that to his repertoire as well. And then John Kelly, he means so much. This time he means six. Dorianoka, let's take you outside the footprint where playoff positioning is an issue. Of course, Oklahoma and West Virginia. Baker Mayfield not starting. First play from scrimmage, Kyler Murray, former A&M Aggie, bus won 66 yards. OU's up 14-3 and threatening, guys. I knew we were going to get an Oklahoma highlight in there for Dari. Yep. How about the great kazoo? Kyler Murray, the yeah. big old head of his, <laughs> motoring down the field. The great kazoo. How big does his head look with that helmet on? <laughs> Sucker was moving. <laughs> Medley's kick sails through the end zone. Hey, coming up at 7.30 Eastern time tonight, it's our SEC Saturday night game. 18th ranked LSU and Texas A&M from Death Valley. It's all coming up right here on the SEC Network. Catch that streaming live on the ESPN app as well. LSU won its eighth game of the season last week. It's their 18th straight season with eight or more wins. It's the longest streak in SEC history and tied with Oklahoma for the longest among Power Five teams. I mean, that's just uh, an incredible run by LSU when you think about it. Especially the last few years when there's been some turmoil over in Baton Rouge. Boy, has there been. Well, those runs done a good job settling things down, though, here in the back half of the season. Four-man rush. Shermer has plenty of time to throw. Catch is made by Sherfield. Twist and turns and finally finds the pigskin right in his lap, picks up 16. There's just been no pressure on the passer at large for either team so far in this game. And if you're going to afford a quarterback this much time, especially with the receiving core, that as we mentioned, there's multiple targets for Vanderbilt in the passing game. Duncan, Sherfield, Lipscomb, eventually they're going to shake loose in the secondary as they did on that play. Vanderbilt averaging 11 yards per pass, 9.7 yards per play. First down and 10. 
Again, four-man rush over the middle. This one's caught by Duncan. He's into the Tennessee territory around the 45-yard line. Gain of 14, Elliott Berry brings him down. It's almost target practice. I mean, you're able to just stand in there. The pocket somewhat collapsed that time, able to find C.J. Duncan yet again underneath, and they're able to run after the catch. You know, if you're going to allow the catches in front of you, you got to get the receiver down quickly. We've seen a couple of explosive plays. Tennessee on a double move to Brandon Johnson downfield. And then Vanderbilt having their success in the passing game as well here on their second offensive series. Last year versus Tennessee, Shermer 21 to 34, 416 through the air. Here goes Sherfield on an end around, and he'll get it to the 40 and stop there. Pick up four. Shermer with 23 touchdown passes. 10 interceptions this year. He has set the single season touchdown record for Vanderbilt with that last touchdown pass here today. Last four games completing 60% of his passes for over 1,200 yards. And a season high versus Missouri a week ago, 348 yards. And you know, he's had a good second half of the season. The turnovers kind of undid their effort versus South Carolina with four picks. Had a rough game as well versus Kentucky as well. On second down, Ralph Webb to the 35. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Sean Golden with the tackle, his fourth already. Ralph Webb looks good today. Got a little shimmy, got a little shake. He does. And the offensive front doing a good job getting him downhill quickly, not having to throw moves in his own offensive backfield. You never want that. Nice push that time by the left side of the Vanderbilt offensive front. Able to get Daniel Batuli on the ground, the leading tackler for the balls at linebacker. You're able to do that. You start picking up four plus yards of run. I love what Derek Mason said about Ralph Webb this week. When he came to Vanderbilt, nobody really knew his name. But when he leaves Vanderbilt, everybody knows his name. Well, you know, when, when you set records and your name's atop the record books, they've had some good ones. Zach Stacy. Among them, he's been erased, or at least bumped down to number two, thanks to Ralph Webb. Tennessee's offense clicking. So is Vanderbilt's. Will we get a defensive stop today? you got to stay with us and find out. 15 minutes are in the books. Dari Noka again. Let's update that Iron Bowl one more time. Seven zip Auburn. Bama with a fourth and one. They go for it. Jalen Hurts picks it up. Then next play. Hurts fires deep. 36 yards to Jerry Judy. 7-7. Seven, seven. Hurts, by the way, is one of his last 11 starts, guys. Thank you, Dari. I think Hurts is going to start rounding into form. Yeah, if he just play better, right? Kyle Shermer on third and short will take it. He'll have the first down. You hit it, Dave, earlier. You know, will we see a defensive stop? Because so far, the offenses have shown an ability to keep the opposing defense off balance. You see here Vanderbilt going no huddle, now jumping the ball with a little bit of tempo. Shermer will get it off to Webb, who was tackled at the 30-yard line. Justin Martin making the play, pick up a four. They're looking to take a shot downfield. Good coverage in the Tennessee secondary. So you just check it down to Ralph Webb, hope he can shake loose. But you see there, you pick up a third and short, you line up, you're under center quickly, and you get the ball off. Well, so far, Andy Ludwig, as a play caller, doing a good job, as has Larry Scott on the other side of keeping things diverse offensively from a play calling standpoint. Straight handoff to Webb. Running strong inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line, eight yards, and a first down. Emmanuel Mosley picking up the tackle. Nice block pulling around from Sage Young at his left guard position. We've seen this a couple of times in this game. Vanderbilt's been able to get downhill they're active along that offensive front. Traditionally have been. Do a lot of pulling guards. They'll overload and go unbalanced at times, as we've already seen in this game. They'll put a couple of extra gaps, a tight end or two tight ends, to one side of the ball. 
and see if the defense can adjust to their formation. Fake it to Webb. Shermer throws on the run, and he was looking for Sherfield. A flag comes in back at the 22-yard line. Well, Shermer got leveled as he delivered this football. And it looked like Corte Sapp, who was coming up, as Shermer let the ball go, and it was... It looked as if to the head or neck area. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 41 of defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So no targeting. They're just saying that this was a roughing the passer call. You see there, I like the no targeting there. Yeah, there was some contact up high. But they're saying if you're Corte Sapp, you've got a chance to pull off. And you can't run through that contact. He didn't. He wanted to get a shot on the quarterback. They're going to protect the passer. They've been consistent in that regard all season. Three tied in look on first down. They'll come near side with it. Sam Dobbs gets it all the way down to the one, and he has pushed back from there. There is an opportunity for a first down inside the one. That may be a little shy of that. But Tooley with the tackle. You know, Dobbs just kind of runs behind his pads. I think he muscles his way into the end zone. Didn't finish that run maybe the way he could have. Got a nice block out front by Nathan Marcus on the perimeter. And you see Dobbs taking himself out. A little bit nicked up at the end of that run. And he ran up, kind of standing straight up. Gave Batuli a chance to deny him the end zone. Out of the eye. Here's Webb. Trying to find a little crease. Can't do it. Golden coming up, making the play for Tennessee defensively. Let's see where they spot this ball. Again, you, there, there is an opportunity for the first down, and uh, referee James Carter getting a good look at it. He's going to say third down. They brought in that extra lineman, went unbalanced, moved their left tackle, Justin School, over to the right side. They'll probably do it again. You see School kind of in the middle. They've got that extra offensive lineman. No, it's Devin Cochran over at left tackle. Getting a little bit of extra girth up front. Webb trying the left side. Flips over into the end zone. Vanderbilt, an extra point from tying this one up. Ralph Webb with his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Well, we're just going to trade punches in the middle of the ring in this one, it looks like. And Webb almost stuck the landing going over the goal line. Durability and nice sense of balance from big number seven. As you see there, we were mentioned the Sage Young earlier on this drive. Had a nice pull and block out on the perimeter. And he got a little bit rolled up. A lot of bodies on those runs along the goal line especially when you bring in some extra offensive linemen, and it's easy to get hung up in the fray. Out of her size, Kentucky, a junior college transfer, a rare junior college transfer. There are a couple on this roster for Vanderbilt, but they don't get many JCs. Both teams now have, uh, as you mentioned, stick the landing. They have stuck the landing in the end zone on their two offensive drives. We'll take a timeout as well. What's for dinner? Witt's Barbecue. With locations in Antioch, Smyrna, and Nolensville Road. Witt's Barbecue has the best hickory smoked pork, turkey, and ribs. And they also have the best hot wings around. And don't forget those yummy side items like baked beans, coleslaw, potato salad, and more. Whether you're feeding four or 4,000, Witt's has got you covered. With pickup, delivery, and full service catering. Why not Witt's Barbecue? We're not fancy, just plain good. There is Sage Young, the injured Vanderbilt offensive lineman who got into the starting lineup against Florida back at the end of September and has stayed there. He needed to be helped off the field. I think that young man will be all right, but uh, being attended to now, we'll see if he can get back in the game or not. We'll keep you posted. Point after pending to try to tie this one up. 
Tommy Openshaw to attempt the point after. 34 of 35 in point afters this year. He's only attempted those seven field goals all season. No good. Justin Martin came flying in. You see right off of the wing where Justin Martin got a free run. There's a flag down, however, back at the three yard line on the near sideline. It's almost out of bounds, but it may be on Martin. Martin was back there so quickly, he almost overran the kick. Offside, defense number eight. That explains Half it. Half the distance, retry. Also, the point afters have been adventurous so far. You see Martin, yeah, he got an early jump. See, kind of a free run there. <laughs> You're right, he had to slow down. <laughs> yeah, put on the brakes. <laughs> he probably surprised himself, and he darn near missed it. He had his eyes closed, because I don't know how he didn't block that thing solidly. He could have blocked that one with his belly button. Almost got there again. But Openshaw yeah. able to split the uprights. So we are tied at 14. Ralph Webb with his ninth rushing touchdown of the year from one yard out. Tells the story for Tennessee in 2017. Stint, you said it was that Florida loss that really just kind of started this ball heading the wrong direction. Ty, Ty Chandler now out over the 15 to the 18. And, and when it starts going that way, boy, it's hard to stop it. Yeah, and you see the first bullet point. That was the culmination of what started down in Gainesville. You see the ultimate dismissal of the head coach, Butch Jones. Cost him his job, and now you've seen three different starting QBs, including Will McBride. Started the year with Quentin Dormady. Some Brady Hope there in an interim capacity here is now the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteer Program, and they're just trying to finish this season out on a positive note. You've got a guy in Jared Garantano wanted to play early. Well, he got his wish, and he's needed to progress under duress. Kelly picks up a yard. Dari, what's going on? Uh, guys, check in and outside the footprint again. Wisconsin, of course, still undefeated. How good are they? People are learning. Alex Hornerbrook to Kyle Penniston. They're in to the half at Minnesota, up 17-0. Boy, we'll see how that Miami loss yesterday kind of shakes up how this sequence will play out. One more Saturday to determine conference champions and who will play the college football playoff. Look at Miami with so many close losses to not very highly regarded teams within the ACC and then you know Clemson versus South Carolina as a one loss team. If they lose to the Gamecocks, you might eliminate an entire conference. Brandon Johnson with another catch. That's a seven yard pickup. Johnson now with four catches for 75 yards. Saw Johnson on a big catch in the opening series, then set up that second scoring drive with a big catch downfield. And you can see the rapport that he's developed. Four targets already in this game. He's caught all four of them. And Jared Garantano knows where he can go with the football when he needs a big catch. Not only to convert the sticks, but to pick up yards. Seven of eight for 102 yards is Garantano. I'll hand it off to Kelly on third down and a couple. They'll try to get that first down. See where the spot is. Jay Woods, first one there for the Commodores. Jay Woods did a pretty good job of holding the point from his nose tackle spot and allowed Emmanuel Smith to kind of get downhill. John Kelly 
Yeah, Derek Mason is out at the numbers. He came out there. He wants him to take a look at this thing. So we'll take the time out as well. Back to Neyland Stadium here in Knoxville after this. Well, there's good reason that Derek Mason was a little hot under the collar as we went to break there is that watch where they spot this football compared to where John Kelly was stopped. He's going to get the ball to the 29 yard line. And as we were talking about a break, Dave, as you mentioned, he, he maybe got past the 28. But he gets stacked up. We mentioned Jay Woods does a great job. There's Emmanuel Smith up high. There's no way that he got that football. And you see Derek Mason's like, look, we got to take a look at this again. He knows that so far in this game, defensive stops are at a premium. The head linesman came running in there and a little bit generous with that spot. Yeah, so now we got to reset the chains. There was a booth initiated review for the spot of the run. The ball will be placed at the 28 and a half yard line. It will be fourth down. Vanderbilt will not be charged a timeout, and they will retain their challenge for the game. Fourth down. Great job by the booth there. You, know, you want to make sure that you get it right on a line to gain there. The 28 and a half is about right. You see Tennessee, they anticipate it, ready to go right. and run a quick fourth down. And now our crew is slowing him down because our referee, James Carter, went to go talk to Derek Mason. So Tennessee was ready to run a play, and they... You lost the ambush yeah. element there. Looks like he's just looking to draw him off sides. Oh, and they got it. They may have got it right up front. Jay Woods made contact with the center. Derek Mason can't believe it. Offside. Defense number 74. Contact in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. He cannot believe it. <laughs> the guy over the football. Well, you know what? And, and they get knocked a lot. You see the contact there. It's an easy call. Here's Garantano, who did a great job of kind of baiting around like he's audibling. And the thing of it is, is that you know who hears that snap count better than anybody? It's a nose tackle. Yeah, but his, you his don't nose to is on count. top of the football. Well, they tell you, don't listen to the snap count. You move on the ball. Oh, Kelly with a stutter step out over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Emmanuel Smith will make the tackle, but not before Kelly picks up nine. How about that for a sequence of events? The booth gets it right. You deny the conversion. You set up a fourth down. Tennessee loses that element of surprise, and then you get an easy first off a baited encroachment on a hard count. And then John Kelly starts slaloming through your defense. It's a good word. He looked like he was going down the mountain, the Smokies, <laughs> on some skis. He's a skateboarder, though, not a skier. Maybe he'll change things now. Football player, too. With the Smoky Mountains around the corner. On second down, big hit on Ty Chandler. That'll be a loss of three on the play. That was Dario Dangbo. We've already mentioned his brother earlier. Dayo did a great job. Was able to get his hand on Jared Garantano as he was trying to complete a pass. And that time, brother Dari did a good job of generating some penetration. Tennessee's offense here in the first quarter and change. Racked up 100 and 63 yards of offense on 20 plays. That'll be out of bounds. That'll be the first time Johnson hasn't come up with the grab, and he just about did. Trey Herndon was there to push him out of bounds. Yeah, Johnson ends up making the catch, just ran out of real estate here, and Herndon does a good job of making sure he's incapable of getting a foot down in bounds. And so for the first time in this game, we see a punting hit. And we get one of the best in the country punting the football, Trevor Daniel. 31 punts over 50 yards this year. Leads the nation, has a 47.3 yard average. 
Second in the conference, fourth in the country. Fair catch called for by Lipscomb. So Vandy's defense holds. They'll have the football when we come back. We're all knotted up at 14. Just want to mention to uh, Coach Chiz and Chris, sorry about Florida State, what they did down in Gainesville oh, today. Oh, boy. Coming off the top ropes from the booth, are we, Dave? <laughs> You know, so I'm in Knoxville, they're in stuff. Charlotte, so yeah. I figured I was safe. Dory's got the reach on you, and Chiz, he'll and, fight dirty. And I've got the mic right now. You do right? have the mic, it's fair. <laughs> we told what they'll stay in the studio know. show. 8.04 to go, second quarter, tied at 14. Had our first defensive stop a moment ago. Ralph Webb with that carry. He'll pick up three. This Vanderbilt team started 3-0. They have lost seven of eight. They beat Western Kentucky 31-17. And you just expected this Vanderbilt team to have a much better season. They returned 18 starters off a team that went to the Independence Bowl last year. Lost to NC State in that game. Yeah, just the experience returning alone. Only Kentucky and Georgia had more returning starters. This team was largely intact. And I think the mental, emotional impact that that Alabama shellac at 59 to nothing. We just drug them down a hole. And it's the way that game went as Lipscomb makes the reception. That was a game that, that saw Alabama just put up numbers that you just don't expect. They allowed 606, 677 yards. Bama rushed for 496. Alabama had 38 first downs, and Vandy only had three. Bama had the football for 42 minutes of that game. 78 yards of total offense. And you're talking about, in a pretty storied program's history, the largest margin of victory. Uh, I think a statement was sent. And at the time, you know, after beating, then at that point, anyway, number 18, Kansas State, and the first 3-0 start they've had since 2011 at Vanderbilt, hopes were high. Shermer, all day to throw. Passes caught at the 45 yard line between two orange jerseys. CJ Duncan makes the grab, but he paid a price. He picks up 18. Well, neither one of these defenses do a great job of pressuring the passer. And that could largely be the reason why we've seen such efficient performances from both of these quarterbacks. See this? I mean, that's a thing of beauty. If you're a quarterback, there's not a rusher within five yards, drops it right in there. Well, that is a nice throw. Look at this placement right over the outstretched hands of Daniel Batuli. But you see the collision after the fact. And C.J. Duncan taking the brunt of that force. We'll step aside. 6.41 to go, second quarter. Well, C.J. Duncan got popped by a couple of defenders. He got up on his own power, went to the sideline. Looks like he might be able to return. Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern, it's the latest Thinking Out Loud with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. I know they'll have a lot to talk about this Monday night. Of course, you can get involved through social media throughout the show. Those two guys breaking it down offensively, defensively, and we're heading down the home stretch, the final Saturday of the regular season. First down and 10 Commodores. Al Shermer really looks good. Nine of 10, 112 yards. Both quarterbacks have been outstanding so far here in the opening half. Seven of nine, 103 for Garantano. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 61, five yard penalty, first down. Bruno Reagan. Yeah, I think they might have gotten the wrong number that time. And we mentioned that Sage Young was out earlier. It looked like Jared Souther's there at left guard. Had a little bit of a flinch. Regan kind of popped his head back up. We've seen that for the snap indication. Center looks between his legs. It's actually drawn Tennessee offsides. That time got his own teammate at left guard. So first down at 15. Ralph Webb looking for a little seam. Nothing there. Clogged up, only a two-yard pickup for Mr. Webb. Ralph has carried it here nine times for 41 yards. And he is now seventh all-time in SEC rushing after that two-yard pickup. And there are the numbers. Look at that list. And there are the names. I mean, look at these names. 
You know, Herschel Walker atop everybody. He did it in three seasons at Georgia with Darren McFadden, along with Felix Jones, Kevin Falk. Nobody talks about him enough. He did it all, did it all for the Patriots, too. Nick Chubb on there, and of course, Ralph Webb. Boy, he had to earn every yard of it in his career at Vanderbilt. Four man rush on second down, wide open. The tight end Dobbs will have the first down near the 40 yard line. Micah Abernathy will make the stop at 17 yards for Sam Dobbs. We saw Dobbs earlier on an end around. See Dobbs in the middle of the three, and there's confusion in coverage. Had three receivers over there. Micah Abernathy coming over from his safety position, but Shermer able to just find that soft spot, and Sam Dobbs completely uncovered along the sideline. Nice catch. How about that look, though? Nice hair, huh? flowing locks. Fabio. Got the stash going. That boy Sam out of Douglasville, Georgia, landmark Christian High School, now with a couple big plays offensively today. Shermer will throw it away. Was he outside the tackle yeah. box? Did he? Cross the line of scrimmage. The officials are definitely going to talk about his great, great awareness really initially by Shermer because he's coming off that play action fake. There's no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside the pocket okay. and the pass crossed the neutral zone. Second down. Check and check. That's right. Both boxes. You mentioned it right off the top. And Shermer, though, just feeling that pressure alone. Watch him. So he's going to turn and fake the toss. His back is to the pressure. Not a very good pickup, and he could just kind of sense it. Justin Martin reaching over Dallas Rivers, who came off of that play fake to try to pick up that edge pressure. Schumer could just feel it, was able to get loose and save the negative yardage play. Dallas Rivers still in the game at running back for the Commodores on second down and 10. Tennessee sending four. Underneath route goes to Sherfield. He'll have eight and a half. Sapp making the play, his third tackle for Tennessee. I mentioned Sherfield earlier. He had four catches last week, ninth all time receiving in his career at Vanderbilt. Had 130 coming into this contest, had a couple of big ones in this game. Big collision at the line of scrimmage. Golden hits Dallas Rivers, no gain, and now you're looking at fourth down. And I see Shermer looking over to the bench saying, let's go, let's go. Let's see what Derek Mason wants to do. It looks like that's what they're going to do. Rashawn Golden coming off the edge, and he's unaccounted for. That's an extra hitter, and he's able to get in the backfield very, very quickly. That's his sixth tackle, and none bigger. Vanderbilt defense got a big stop versus Tennessee on their previous possession, and now a chance for the volunteer defense to step up. Shermer will run for it. Slides at the 30, and he'll have it. Shermer keep. Hey, Shermer, he's not the most mobile guy. And you look downfield, it looked like he had Jared Pinckney, who had kind of settled down. He said, forget it. I'm going to play this smart. I'm not going to throw back towards the field, especially when I've been running to my right towards the boundary. I got a run pass option here when I move the pocket like this. Let me just tuck it and pick up the first. And so, you know, his zeal to go for it on fourth down, he rewards his coach for the trust. A little flea flicker near side. Lipscomb touchdown. 30 yards. Some razzle dazzle from the Commodores, and they take the lead. I like the aggressive mentality of this play call. You just convert. So watch the motion, man. That's Lipscomb. And you get the flea flicker, and look how wide open. I mean, there's nobody in this area, even on that side of the hash, completely unaccounted for, bought the eyes of any underneath defender that could have seen Lipscomb leak out of the backfield off of his motion and off a of fourth down conversion. You catch the defense on their heels. Hope and Shaw with the point after. And Vanderbilt has taken a 21 
to 14 lead. A critical fourth and one. Shermer converts. He picks up two yards, and that would set up Vanderbilt for the touchdown drive that went 10 plays, 84 yards, almost five and a half minutes off the clock. Well, in a game like this, it's so back and forth, Dave. As you take another look at the flea flicker, wide open, man, just hit it. Just get it close to him. Let him stop. He'll come back for it, whatever. They want a defender in the zip code. Flea flicker. You buy those defenders' eyes underneath, and Lipscomb is all alone on that side of the football field. And in a game where you seemingly have to hold serve, the Commodore defense are able to break the Tennessee offense. You get the ball to yours, convert on a fourth down, and in a lot of ways, you basically steal a possession in this football game. Vandy's had the football three times. They've gone eight plays, 75 yards, 10 plays, 75 yards, and 10 plays, 84 yards, all touchdowns. Well, you know, you talk about it, you see there Jared Garantano and his offense, and now they're playing with a deficit. So far, prior to that last offensive possession, the volunteer offense was clicking right along. But the Commodores have not been slow. Chandler will take a knee. Hey, don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of Tennessee's Pride of the Southland Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming that now on the ESPN app. That's all coming up. We have 2.37 left to go here in the second quarter. A little shootout inside Neyland Stadium. Last year was a shootout as well. Vanderbilt got the better of Tennessee. Vandy's actually won three of the last five in this series after Tennessee just dominated. That one stretch, they'd won 22 in a row. Actually put some teeth into this rivalry a little bit. First down and 10 for the Vols. Garantano. He will be tripped up and lose four yards. Charles Wright will get credit for the sack. Coming into this game, Charles Wright had eight sacks among the best in the conference, but none versus SEC opponents. And this one right here really was Odangbo again coming off the edge, able to win over right tackle Devontae Brooks. That one will fall incomplete. Boy, all of a sudden, Vandy's got yeah. a little pep in their step. You're right. And all of a sudden, they've been able to establish pressure. Well, really, we've only been able to think, you know, three different times in this game where I've seen Garantano disrupted in the pocket. And again, it's Odangbo coming underneath Brooks. And Garantano, he's begging for a targeting or something. He's not going to get that on that play. And right now, all of a sudden, the Vanderbilt pass rush stepping up big. Pocket again collapses. Garantano dropped back around the 12 yard line. Vandy wants a timeout with 149 to go before halftime. Where'd that come from? You see him winning inside. It was just a three down look and they're jockeying around. Who's going to come with the pressure? And this time they end up just looping around Odangbo and Jonathan Wynn, who's kind of the joker, stand up player. And you're able to win with just a little easy twist, really up front. Josh Smith from his linebacking position, and then you loop Jonathan went around. There have been so many different faces for Tennessee up front. Well, right now, you got Ryan Johnson in there at center. Coleman Thomas was incapable of going yet again, a senior. You see the names. You know, Chance Hall never even made it out for the season. Jack Jones effectively retired early in the year. Drew Richmond, Jayshon Robertson, their best offensive lineman and most consistent, won't be seen here today either for the four straight game. They just got Brett Kendricks back at left tackle. It's been a revolving door up front. Trevor Daniel will need to hit one of his booming punts as he is inside the goal line to receive this snap. 149 to go before halftime. Andy should have decent field position. Lipscomb will let it hit, and it'll go out of bounds. See where they spot this. It'll be near the 45 when it's all said and done. Actually, they'll move it closer to the, yeah, right at the 45. 
Sunday at 6 o'clock Eastern, we will have UIC taking on 8th ranked Kentucky. Little hoops for you right here on the SEC Network. The Cats have got it back together. A tough game against Kansas back in uh, mid November. They have since reeled off three straight by an average of almost 15 points a game. Kevin Knox playing great. Freshman averaging almost 15 a game. Over six rebounds. Illinois, Chicago. And the Cats coming your way, 6 o'clock Eastern time. And now, right now, if you're Tennessee, you know, they couldn't have gone more poorly on that offensive possession. There's your understatement. Three straight passes, not a ton of time, eating up off the clock. And now your opponent with excellent field position. C.J. Duncan. They're going to say incomplete. You know, we talk about having to hold serve in this game. You know, saw last year where Vanderbilt was able to get hot in the second half. They rattle off, rattle off 21 straight points to get the victory 45-34 over Tennessee. You know, they get the ball back in the second half. They'll have it first in the third quarter. They've basically stolen two possessions here having stopped Tennessee earlier and they score and then they stop them quickly on three straight sacks. They'll go Webb off the left side. He's out to the 49 yard line. Picks up four clock. Down a 125 and Webb is now not going to get up immediately. Boy, he is a guy that's just, uh, it's not been one thing with him this year. It has just been numerous issues. He has fought through it to start 49 consecutive games over his career. But it's just, I mean, the guy just gives you 100% every single snap, and his body feels it. Well, you know, when, when defenses have been able to key on him, and this year, as we mentioned, you know, the passing game has done a much better job, but the offensive front has struggled. Good to see him leave the field under his own power. But coming into this game, his average carries only 15 touches a game. That's the least he's ever had while at Vanderbilt. Let's see if we can see. I wonder if he just went down hard on that right knee. Maybe just shook him up a little bit. Walked off under his own power. Confident. And that guy's been a warrior. One of the first things that comes out when they talk about him is his durability and his toughness. We'll see number seven again. But as it is, a big third down and an opportunity for this Commodore offense to maintain this possession. Here it is, third down. Pressure comes. Shermer near side. And a flag and a catch. It's going to be offensive pass interference on Kalija Lipscomb. He's all tangled up with Justin Martin. And he got his hands all up in Martin's face mask. Well, Martin thinks it's going against him. <laughs> Maybe it's offsetting them because both of these guys, you see Brady Hoke, he's doing his job lobbying over there. Justin Martin saying, look, I got a stiff arm to the face mask with the ball in the air. Pass interference, defense wow. number eight. That penalty is declined. The result of the play, the catch, and the first down. Brady Hoke having a hard time digesting that one. Well, watch what happens here. You see Justin Martin, and yeah, he's got some jersey, but look at this. Look at Lipscomb's right hand. <laughs> oh, man. And that's somehow oh. defensive pass interference. Well, he, you know what? He got his head in there. You can't get it. <laughs> the crowd just saw it on the big board. That one is batted down. It almost picked off. And an injured Tennessee player. Is that Golden? Who was that down seven? Yeah, yeah that is right. Golden. We mentioned Golden earlier. Got into the backfield, had a nice tackle for loss. He's been very active in this game. He's a guy they do a lot with, especially out of the slot. See Tennessee bringing a little bit more pressure. Nice pass break up by Golden. Trying to find Dobbs again over the middle. Well, they attend to uh, Mr. Golden. Let's get a studio update. Dari, let us know what's happening. Well, guys, I'll do my best. Alabama came out of the half down 10-7, but went on a very quick scoring drive, finished off by Bo Scarborough. So now the tied lead about three minutes in, 14-10, three minutes into the third. 
Okay. I was waiting for Chiz or Dorian to think she was come at my knees. You were bracing. <laughs> right. I was wondering why you put a mouthpiece in. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Coach Chiz and Dorian. As you see Galden, who was, he was pretty shaken up. You could see him trying to work his way through it. Now pops up. And he's able to trot off under his own power. He's had a heck of a game. Already with six tackles and a pass broke it up. Yeah, we'll see him. All right, so we mentioned number seven for the Commodores. We'll see him again. Seven will be back in there. These guys get a little bit shaken up. Obviously, the Tennessee defense, they're going to need his contributions because he is a very versatile defender, can play in coverage, play in space. It can also be a nice defender, a force defender in the box versus the run. One timeout left for Vanderbilt. Clock at 42 seconds on a second down and 10. Vandy has had the football three times and scored every time. Shermer hit as he throws. That one is overthrown. He was looking for Jared Pinkney is tied in, and now you're looking at third down and 10. Well, now the pressure for both teams starting to pick up. And that time it was by Jonathan Kongbo. He was able to beat inside Justin School at left tackle. And we mentioned Cal Shermer, who has enjoyed a pretty nice pocket throughout this game. He was disrupted on that throw, definitely off the mark because of it. And a big third down opportunity for this ball defense to get off the field. Shermer up top. Pass is caught. Touchdown. Kalijah Lipscomb with another remarkable catch for the Commodores. Are you kidding me? 43 yards. I was waiting to see the ball bounce off the ground. And it looks like. We got a flag on the field, and it's going to be an ineligible receiver downfield call. Remains third down. Oh, what was an unbelievable effort by Kalijah Lipscomb to come up with this catch? Derek Mason trying to get an explanation. Unless it was. Unless there was a receiver that was covered up right. at the top of the screen. If you're covered up, you can't release down the field as an eligible receiver. I, otherwise, I'm not seeing. Derek Mason going to take a timeout. Is the slot covered up on the far side? That's what it is. Yep. And here's Pinkney releasing, it looks like, at tight end. Oh, and man. what a huge error. I mean, that's just. Uh, you have too many men along the line of scrimmage. You see, they're covered up in the slot. The tight end releases. You've got four receivers in the route, but one of them is ineligible due to formation. Derek Mason can't believe it. So we've seen a fourth down play where Tennessee's able to draw the Vanderbilt defense offside, just a middle lapse, wow. and then here on a huge catch at the end of the half. On the opposite side of the field from where the play was. I mean, purely oh. just a formational error by Vanderbilt. Good job by the officials in catching it. And a heck of a catch by Kalijah Lipska. Third down and 15. Four-man rush. Shermer ducks under. Throws on the run. Incompletes. 20 seconds to go. It'll be fourth down. And another injured player. Tennessee has somebody down at the 50-yard line. Daryl Taylor, a sophomore out of Waverly, Virginia. I believe that's... It's probably Jeff George, oh. the receiver. Or Daryl Taylor, rather, who's a little bit banged up there on the numbers. And he had a nice pass rush. 
beat Devont, uh, or rather, beat the right tackle right away, Devin Cochran. And then at the end of the play, a little bit shaken up. I got hung up with his own man. It's a little bit surprising it wasn't Elliot Berry that was injured because he was the one that got landed on. A right ankle. So just a series of injuries here towards the end of the half. The net result is fourth down and 15. 20 seconds to go before halftime. You know, Derek Mason still talking about that illegal man downfield. Well, if you're just joining us, this is uh, what's transpired in the first half. Both teams got off to great starts for Tennessee on their opening drive. They went uh, nine plays and 85 yards, and Vandy answered back on an eight-play, 75-yard drive of their own. Then it was Kelly leaping in for the end zone. Would not be outdone as Ralph Webb does the same thing on the other side. Then a little flea flicker. And for Vanderbilt, their first three possessions resulted in touchdowns as Lipscomb takes that one into the end zone. And now Vanderbilt will punt for the first time here in the opening half, and they lead by seven. And a whistle. Oh, we can't seem to get out of our own way. Prior to the snap, false start, kicking team number 16, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Hey, the ESPN app. Yeah. Could be your best friend. It's a great app. A it is. good app. Catch all the other games, even in venues sometimes. While you're at a game, watch a game. Like during penalty delays or injury timeouts, that sort of thing. Check out that app and see games where uh, plays are actually being done. Here's the punt from Sam Loy, and that one will hit at the 16. You know, the app can be your best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. Nine seconds to go. Tell you what, these offenses, Vanderbilt in particular, 237 yards here in the opening half. Tennessee got off to a great start, but they kind of have uh, fallen on some tough times here. The last two drives, nine plays, nine yards after their first two drives went 160 yards in 15 plays, and Tennessee will take a knee, and that will get us to halftime. Perhaps the most important play of this half ended up being a penalty. Bad formation by Vanderbilt. Otherwise, if you're Tennessee, you've got a hole. Our score at the break. Commodores lead at 21-14. Time to get it to the studio. Dari, Chris, and Chiz. Well, Coach Kyle Shermer, 175 yards through the air, no turnovers that half. What does he need to continue to do well in the second half? The exact same. Take care of the football. Continue to lead this football team. He's done a heck of a job in the first half. You still got 30 minutes of football. Defensively, you've been able to get some pressure on Garantano. What's been the change there from the first quarter to the second quarter? Well, just trying to figure out what they do. Everybody comes out with a game plan, and then what you have to do is really adapt and adjust, and I think that's what we've done, adapt and adjust. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Seven-point advantage for the visiting Vanderbilt Commodore. Somebody's going to get their one and only conference win of the season here this afternoon inside Neyland Stadium. Dave Neal back alongside Matt Stinchcomb. And Matt, looked like both these teams were just going to uh, put up 60, 70 points in the way this one started. But then it looked like Vanderbilt's defense found something and kind of hung their hat on it to slow down Tennessee. Well, it started with the incomplete pass on third down. They tried to hit Brandon Johnson. He just ran out of real estate. 
Bandy able to go down and score, and that's what put them ahead, but it started out very smoothly for the Tennessee offense. There's Johnson early on in the game, downfield, able to find Ethan Wool. They tried a couple of fade passes, and Marquez Callaway was the one that was capable of making that circus one-handed catch. But at the end of the second quarter, the Vanderbilt pressure started to get to Garantano. And you could see, especially on the right side of the Tennessee offensive front, a difficulty in maintaining that pocket integrity. You want to try to give your passer plenty of room to deliver downfield. And right now, Vanderbilt, you look at those passing yards, 175 yards in the air. That's 25 yards more than what this Tennessee secondary has typically given up. One of the better pass defenses, at least statistically, in the conference for the Volunteers. And right now, the Commodores having their way with them. Vandy will get the football first. Wakefield coming out of that end zone. He's out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. So a decent start now for Vanderbilt's offense. And really, Kyle Shermer had some... Uh, Nice throws, got some help from his guys, but finished 13 of 19, 175, and a couple of touchdowns. Ralph Webb got a little banged up right before halftime. We'll see how much he can go here in the second half. And you know, the Tennessee pressure started to get to Shermer there late in the second quarter. It will be interesting to see. They got three pressures there in the first half. Will they be able to affect Shermer? Because when he's had time to operate, he's been picking apart the Tennessee defense. Webb almost got hit in the backfield, lost the football. There is a scramble, obviously, for the football. It'll be a loss of two if Vanderbilt retains possession. It was Kendall Vickers who got upfield almost immediately. Did a great job from his defensive tackle alignment. And he's one of those guys, one of the leaders of the defense. Brady Hope couldn't say enough about him. He's a D-line coach, loves number 39, and that ball is out. And Vanderbilt lucky to avoid disaster here in the opening third quarter. Shermer over the middle. He was looking for C.J. Duncan incomplete. Now it'll be third down and 12 and a half. Some more twists. Games with the defensive line and then slot pressure coming from the Tennessee defense. And I think what we're seeing now defensively is Bob Shoup saying, look, I can't afford to just try to play coverage, rush four. We saw a lot of that in the first half. And so far, Vanderbilt's done a pretty good job of giving their quarterback time and room to throw the football. The Volunteers need to find a way to get Shermer off his spot. And they brought some pressure from the second level. Andy, four of six on third downs. Here comes some more heat from Tennessee. Shermer gets rid of it. Pass is caught inside the Tennessee 50. That'll be a nice grab from Tennyson. 25-yard pickup. And another good catch from this receiving core. Unbelievable, these guys showing up big for their quarterback. As you mentioned it, look at that adjustment by Tennyson to the ball. Turned completely around. In coverage was Balaam Buchanan. His back was to the ball the entire time, and Tennyson did an excellent job of adjusting to that ball in flight. Tennessee stuffs the run. Ralph Webb hit by Kendall Vickers and Daryl Taylor. Good to see Taylor back out there. Got a little hurt right before halftime. Yeah, Taylor was shaking up there, as you mentioned. He had gotten pretty good pressure on Shermer on the play where he was a little bit banged up. And from an edge pressure standpoint, if you're just going to bring your four down, number 19 is one of the better pass rushers that Tennessee's had this season. A great job on first down there, but not allowing any positive yards to set up the second and 10. We'll try the left side again. Webb with a hurdle inside the 40 to the 39. And if Southers wasn't there, he might have gone for another 10, 12 yards. Pick up a seven. Went right over Justin Martin. Great job pulling by Jared Southers and Bruno Reagan. And if Southern's, Southers stays outside as the lead puller, you block the perimeter guy. You've got an inside puller and Bruno Reagan coming over at center. They ended up blocking the same guy. And you see left 
our left guard in here, Jared Southers, in there for the injured Sage Young. He keeps his eyes outside. Ralph Webb still running. Pocket collapses and the throw a little bit high for Lipscomb. It's official. Tennessee is saying, look, we're not going to lay back anymore. So they're bringing four plus on a regular basis now. And it's not just off of the edge. We're seeing some in the A gaps as well, right in the face of Kyle Shermer. They're not going to allow him to just stand back there and surgically dissect this defensive secondary. So on fourth down and three, Bandy's offense stays on the field. They've converted their other fourth down opportunity tonight. And versus the pressure we've seen from Tennessee, will Vanderbilt try to move the pocket and allow Shermer an option to run with it if he needs it? Some more pressure from Tennessee. Shermer up top. Just too far for Caleb Scott. Well, Tennessee heated him up again. The fifth pressure of the game that time, Kyle Phillips was able to Shermer. And you see the frustration a little bit there. Just a hair too far on that throw under duress. And Tennessee gets a big stop to open the third quarter. Dari Noke in studio, 2014 Auburn lead. Bama after having a touchdown called back, setting up for the field goal. J.K. Scott cannot handle the snap. Disaster strikes. Auburn with a six-point lead going into the fourth. Wow. Drama on the planes. J.K. Scott, a heck of a punter. You see those guys in holding duty sometimes. Another, another J.K., John Kelly. Been kind of quiet in this game. Only seven carries, the one catch. And Kelly will take it out over the 40 to the 41. Let's check in with Dawn. Well, Dave Derek Garantano constantly on his back in that second quarter, and Coach Brady Hoke addressed that at the half. He said it need to have a couple of things here. He said they've got to block better, obviously, and then he said Garantano has to get rid of the ball a little bit faster, too. Now, remember, they only have five scholarship offensive linemen dressed for this game. That is crazy, and last week, of course, we're playing walk-ons. They just ran out of bodies. Yeah, the attrition has been pretty remarkable for Tennessee along their offensive front. Second down, Garantano dropped back at the 31-yard line. This time, Dario Dangbo, loss of eight. The Odangbo boys have been getting after Jared Garantano. And that time from the inside, covered up, guard to guard, Along the defensive front, you bring five, and there's a case in point. That's exactly what Brady Hoke is talking about. Things are deteriorating around you. Either get rid of the football or get it out of that pocket. That time, the difficulty being you got pressure coming from the edge and from the middle of the defensive front. Third down and 14. Trying to set up a screen, and Vandy all over it. Garantano, nowhere to go. He's out of bounds at the 34. Vandy played that about as well as you could play it. Josh Smith pushes him out of bounds. Well, they mugged John Kelly coming out of the backfield. They're not going to let him release to where you can get a screen pass off. We talked about John Kelly being such a huge contributor to this offense. And right now, Vanderbilt keying in on the centerpiece of the volunteer offensive attack. John Kelly was looking to release for that screen. He never got out of the backfield. Trevor Daniel to punt it away. There is a missile. Oh. My goodness. Lipscomb inside the five. And he is dropped back at the nine. A 61 yard punt. My goodness. A great punt. Let it go into the end zone, kid.
Gary Noke in studio. It is really rolling Auburn's way after the botched field goal attempt. Jarrett Stidham caps and drives. 16 yard touchdown run. Fourth touchdown run of the year. They're going for two up 12 guys. 12 in the fourth. What do you make of that? Th this is the recipe to beat Bama, right? Your quarterback's got to have one of his best games, and we don't know what else Stidham's done in this one. But then turnovers, and you see that, especially from special teams in that phase. You, know, you look at the other two times since the conference split, where both those teams are in the top ten, and Auburn's won both of them. This might be the third. First down and ten. Ralph Webb gets the corner first down and pushed down hard. They'll spot it back at the 22, but a 13-yard gain. Sean Schamberger runs him out of bounds. You got a light box. You know, there's only five defenders in there, so the safeties have to trigger quickly when you see that handoff. A little bit late downhill with the secondary help, and Ralph Webb had a full head of steam to get downfield. There goes Webb. Stutter steps through the hole. He's to midfield and pushed out of bounds again. And the senior adding to his career totals. Seventh all time in the SEC in rushing, just picked up 31 more. You see Vanderbilt doing a good job along the line of scrimmage. And then you get a hat up to the second level. Colton Jumper, the only linebacker from tackle to tackle at that second level. And if you get a hat, you get an offensive lineman just to cover him up. Shermer will throw. And air mails it out of bounds. By the way, Webb now up to 93 yards on the ground. We talk about Webb's kind of had a, a more muted performance over the course of the season. It's been hard for him to get rolling. The last couple of the weeks, they've been trying to get him on track. And he's one of those guys that, as we've seen here, you know, was a little bit nicked up there in the second quarter, but he's more than ready to go here in the third. Second down and 10 from the Tennessee 49. Shermer off the mark, tried to hit the slant to Caleb Scott. Boy, Vandy just doesn't really want to run unless they give it to Webb, do they? If he's not on the field, you can almost assume it's going to be a pass. Exactly, exactly right. You know, Webb's in that lineup and you've got that threat, otherwise, it seems pretty consistent that Vanderbilt's going to go to the air. Had two slant opportunities on that one. Shermer, as you mentioned, just high and away. Scott couldn't bring up, come up with it. And after that first down shot and a second down incompletion, faced with a third and long. And will Tennessee bring pressure as they did last possession? Four-man rush. Shermer steps up. Nice moves from the quarterback, close to the first down. Nine and a half, maybe 10. Let's see where the spot is. Well, you want to know the difference between a freshman quarterback and a veteran quarterback? And Kyle Shermer, he's seen a lot of snaps. A junior, pocket collapses around him. Only brought four, as you mentioned. Jonathan Kongbo wins from his right defensive end position on an inside move. Great job by Shermer, just getting straight up field and battling his way nearly to first down yardage. It's right there at the mark. I think he's going to be a little bit shy of this. Less than a yard, and Vandy's been I mean, we're pretty predictable. Last time, right? right, they've been predictable on these fourth and shorts. You said earlier, you know, Openshaw coming in this game, only seven field goal attempts, and Ralph Webb still on the sideline on a fourth and less than a yard. Curious, curious personnel decision. They have Dallas Rivers at 225 pounds in at running back. Bigger body, but doesn't get a ton of coaches. There goes Shermer sneak. Maybe second effort got it. The initial contact pushed him backwards. It looked to me like he got stuffed. Oh, 
and did. Great surge along the Tennessee front. They slanted right into the A-gap that Shermer was going to try to sneak into, just to the left of Bruno Reagan. Watch his right knees down. Oh, yeah. That initial contact, and it was Jared Southers there, really, that didn't get any push. And here's the thing on quarterback sneaks and the quarterbacks that are good at it, it's not just fall forward and drive your legs. You got to give that offensive line at least a beat to get some type of movement. You know, effectively, Shermer runs into his own man and downs himself two fourth down stops by the Tennessee defense. Derek Mason taking a timeout. He might want to challenge the spot, but I. Uh, he's not going to win this. No. One. The Vanderbilt coach has requested a timeout in order to challenge the spot on the field. The previous play is under review. You know, I don't know that Derek Mason saw that his quarterback's knee hit the ground. Right. I think that's the problem is because he was obviously behind the line of scrimmage when that right knee goes down right there. He's done. It's like you said, you know, initially in real time, it's a good point. Maybe that second effort, effort where he kind of surged late, but even then, it doesn't look like he had enough. And here's the other thing. I don't know that you're going to be able to see. Yeah, see. The, these are simultaneous looks at the previous play. And there's, he got, he advanced the football zero. It might, might be even lost some yardage. Great surge. You end up slanting your defensive lineman right into that A gap. It was either Reginald McKenzie or Alexis Johnson. It's hard to see there, but it was a great initial surge. Kendall Vickers and obviously the linebackers come in there to make sure that there was no second effort. But even if there were, you know, Shermer, I think he got he got stuffed so quickly he went down to a knee. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Vanderbilt will be charged a timeout and they will have no more challenges for the game. I don't First think that Derek Mason saw the knee hit the ground. He didn't. He couldn't have. Right. Because then it would have clearly shown that he wasn't close. And you see he's accepting of it. I think a lot, by the time he had a crack at it, he recognized that he probably just burned a timeout. Now, if you're Jared Garantano, you got to heed the admonishment from your coach. Look, you got to be smart with this football. Don't be reckless, but throw some football footballs away. Tuck it and run if you have to. Long throw to the wide side of the field, and he is hooking up with Brandon Johnson today. That is pickup of nine. He emptied the backfield on first down and open this possession. You got multiple options out there, at receiver. But you know where Garantana wants to go with this football, and it's going to be to number seven has been so reliable the only target that didn't count as a completion Brandon Johnson still caught it he just was out of bounds on a big third down five catches 86 yards for Johnson sophomore at a plantation Florida I'll run it with Kelly a couple of yards for number four Oren Burks making the tackle or the fifth year senior wrapping up his Vanderbilt career. I've had him. He's been at a disadvantage. They've had to move him inside the linebacker, and he's just not a big bodied guy. They've bulked him up to 230. But in this 3 4 look, he's had to make a bunch of tackles. And a guy that's got range. You know, he's going to help you on a passing down versus some of these open formations, the spread formations. The tackle, the tackle, not a guy that could get downhill that easily. Garantano trying to get out of trouble. We'll throw it away. Charles Wright putting the pressure on Garantano. That time Garantano was really deep in his drop. You're talking about that kind of a short corner. He was about eight yards deep and then drifted even further. And right now, Tennessee is really having a difficult time at right tackle. 
They're not doing very well versus the left defensive end over and over again. Deo Odangbo doing a great job of getting his edge on number 77, Devontae Brooks. Garantano over the middle, caught. First down inside the 30-yard line. They'll spot it at the 28. There goes Brandon Johnson again. Well, Garantano had to deliver this one under heavy pressure. Odengbo again with the shot on the quarterback. Garantano stands in there and finds his favorite target, Brandon Johnson. Right there in front of the safety, over the top of the linebacker's outstretched hands and another big catch for number seven. 107 yards on six catches. On these passing downs, uh, you keep an eye on that right side of the Tennessee front because Vanderbilt getting consistent pressure. A little delay pitch to Kelly. I, they may not have been on the same page there. Kelly looks right at his quarterback like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it looked like, yeah, for sure, Garantano, he turned around like he expected Kelly to come to him. And Kelly, he was releasing like he was expecting a toss right now. Watch him. You see Garantano, oh, he's yeah. wanting to hand it off. And Kelly was wide. He's expecting a toss. And he ended up getting it, but it screwed up the rhythm of the play. It didn't get downhill quickly enough. And Otangbo again was able to get in the backfield. These negative yardage plays from the Vanderbilt defense, that's the fifth tackle for loss. Play fake at Garantano as he's falling down, completes the pass. They're going to say incomplete, juggling it out of bounds on the far side is Callaway. And that time, just a late get off by Brett Kendrick. You know, Charles Wright got out there quickly, and you can see Callaway able to find his way back to the football, and they're saying juggling it. It's a good call by the official. Never secured the catch before he had touched down out of bounds. Callaway with a heck of a touchdown grab back in the first half. One hander in the corner of the end zone. Definitely a SC top 10 nominee. Garantano sidearms and boy, he is lucky that wasn't picked off. Well, Garantano's got some speed. We met with this coaching staff earlier on in the season. You know, we asked, you know, how much of a runner is he? Because it's one thing to be able to run, but when you're on the field to be a good runner, you see Ferguson limping his way off the field. And right there, you just pick up positive yardage and try to make it a more makeable field goal for your place kicker. So a 49-yard attempt for Aaron Medley. Plenty of leg. He hammered that. One. Yes, he did. He had a career-long 48 against Missouri earlier. Well, he's got a new career-long, and that one clearly would have been good from 50 and beyond. He's channeling his inner Trevor Daniel. <laughs> yes, he is. He hammered that ball. 21-17, our score here in Knoxville. Introducing Life Room, where outdoor living meets future technology. Life Room's smooth glide screens keep harmful UV rays and bugs out, and its innovative cooling system gives you comfort and tranquility. Enjoy your Life Room year round with a free radiant heater. Call today for your free design consultation and learn more about this patent pending revolution in outdoor living that costs less than you'd imagine. Act now. Life awaits. Life Room, outdoor living perfected. Well, a lot of folks in these parts want to know who the next head coach will be at Tennessee football. Don Davenport went out before the game and talked to some of the fans. Who do you guys want to lead the Tennessee Vols next year? He left, but he's coming back. Lane Kiffin! Kiffin. David Cutcliffe. Dabo Sweeney. James Franklin. John Gruden. Just saying, maybe. Oh, no, I know John. He's not coming. It will be Mellon. I'm on the Dan Mellon train. Me too. Dan Mullen train around here. <laughs> and a John Gruden buddy, apparently. That guy knew, he knows John, and he ain't coming. <laughs> well, uh, you know, that 
By the way, that was big Vol fan, David Keith, by the way. Um, according to Mark Slayball, these are the potential head coaching candidates. And Dan Mullen has popped up that list. Matt Campbell has some issues financially getting out of Iowa State. Yeah, about 9.4 million issues, I believe. But how about Dana Holgerson yeah. kind of coming into the picture here the last few hours, really? Yeah, you know, it didn't look very pretty versus Oklahoma for West Virginia so far. But an offensive-minded guy, you know, spent some time. You know, obviously, this part of the world recognizes you can't just recruit in-state, which is something that Tennessee would face. Catch is made by Sherfield out over the 35 to the 36, a gain of 11. You know, there are three seasons now. I mean, this is where we've gotten to in college football. There's the regular season, there's the recruiting season, and now there's the head coach season. I mean, that's where we are in college football. And, and add another element to that with the early signing period this year, December 20th now, as opposed to the to traditional date in February, where you have to accelerate this process. All that's done is force these decisions to happen even faster so recruits know who they're going to be going to play for. Here's Webb. Well, and I talked to a few of the Tennessee coaches before halftime. Some of these guys got to go recruit tomorrow. But here's a look at some of the available Power Five head coaching spots. And, you know, what do you make of Ole Miss? I mean, here's a guy, Matt Luke, who took right. a team, six and six, committed to the program. You don't know what's going to happen in terms of the NCAA. We expect to hear something, I mean, like really soon. I think it's a function of what happens with the, the NCAA. And, you know, I think Matt Luke earned the right to be the head coach at Ole Miss going forward. Flag comes in behind the play as Webb takes it to the 43. You know, great win on the road at Mississippi State, capping off, you know, they can't go to a bowl game, but they were bowl eligible in terms of victories. You know, you had, a, you had a change at quarterback. One of the guys was supposed to be in the year of the quarterback, Shea Patterson, go to a backup, a JUCO transfer, and Jordan Tamu. Holding offense number 71. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, second down. And, you know, Matt Luke, to me, one of the better coaching jobs of the year. You, know, you think of all the adversity that program faced and to keep those guys playing hard. And, you know, we've already seen, obviously, with Brady Hope being an interim head coach here, you know, some of the casualties of this season and the expectations that come with this conference. You know, the team that beat Tennessee earlier in the year in Florida on a last second play. Jim McElwain, no longer the coach down there as well. Everyone chasing excellence. Boy, there was a got to be flags. Sam Dobbs got shoved to the ground by Daniel Batuli. And Batuli, I don't know what, I mean, when you see this again, <laughs> I don't know what Daniel's talking about. Pass interference, defense number 35. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. He, he's saying, Coach, I didn't want him to catch the ball. I didn't want him to catch it so badly, I figured I'd night train him. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? He's a great tackler. He's trying to play coverage like a rundown tackler, and you can see him frustrated, but there's no question. I think, was he, PI. I think he said that he, uh, he thought he had the ball. It was a good tackle if he did have the ball. It was Probably a great tackle. Right, he didn't. Tennyson on a jet sweep. And with that, Dari, give us an update. All right, Dave, on fourth and three, Alabama trailing Auburn 26-14. They've converted every fourth down all season long. That streak has stopped. Robert Foster just shy of the first down. Auburn takes over on downs under seven minutes to go. Wow. A couple of bad snaps in that game, it looked like. You know, sometimes the most important pass of a game is the one from the center to a punter or a quarterback. Dallas Rivers will pick up three. You know, one of the unsung heroes for assistant coaches in this league has to be Kevin Steele at Auburn. He did a great job last year, and he loses one of the best players in the country. And all this defense has done is come to play almost every single snap yeah. all year. You know, you're, you're breaking in a new quarterback. Everybody said Jarrett Stidham this, that. 
struggled on the road versus Clemson. You're without carry on Johnson for a couple of games. Cam Petway as well. That defense has kept Auburn afloat and has been a dominant unit this year. Vanderbilt off of that holding penalty, or that penalty earlier rather, dug themselves a hole and a chance to convert on third down. Four-man rush over the middle and caught, bobbled first. And the reception made down to the 35-yard line goes C.J. Duncan. He almost lost that one, 23 yards. I think he was almost expecting contact. But Duncan, he was so open that as this ball arrives, I think he was kind of taking his eyes off the ball and expecting contact from the middle of the field. Colton Jumper coming over. It was Rashawn Galden in the coverage. I think he was anticipating linebacker depth being a little bit deeper. Duncan able, able to make that kind of juggling catch and a big conversion for Vanderbilt. Senior trying to go out in style, 88 yards. Receiving as Kendall Vickers comes flying through the A-gap. Offside. Defense number 39, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty remains first down. We've seen this a couple of times on both sides. Where these interior defensive linemen, they're either listening to the snap count or watching the movement of the offensive linemen. Either way, it's the ball that has to trigger your movement. And this is the kind of spot on the field, the last two previous possessions where Vanderbilt has stalled out offensively and have been stopped on fourth downs. Here, ahead in the down and distance with that encroachment of the false start. Shermer. Pocket collapses and he'll get dropped to the 35. Jonathan Kongbo, first one there, loss of five. So you give that advantage right back. Kongbo's just standing up at defensive end right here. Now he's been winning on a number of different pass rushes in this game. And this time just power and underneath lifts Justin School right up out of his shoes. Got both those hands in his chest and was able to win inside. He's been able to do that on a number of occasions in this game. Vanderbilt unbalanced to the left side. Ralph Webb. We'll get to the 31. Great job by Daniel Batuli that time. He undercut this run. He ran from his linebacker position right where the pulling guard vacated his spot at right guard. They're trying to run power behind that extra offensive lineman. But you look at Ralph Webb and what he's meant over the course of his career versus Tennessee, putting together another 100-yard performance here in this contest. That will be the final play of the third quarter. Ralph Webb has one more quarter of Vanderbilt football left in him. 21-17 as we head to the fourth. We started with a lot of offense. Defenses have come to play here of late. Tennessee getting after it again. One school says it's the 111th meeting. One school says it's the 112th. They started back in 1892. As we head to the fourth quarter, the fourth quarter has not been good for Tennessee's offense of late. In the last eight games, they have scored but three points in the fourth quarter. Trying to get a stop here on third down against this Vanderbilt offense. Third down and six. Shermer underneath first down CJ Duncan to the 20. As CJ Duncan just drags all the way across the formation and there was confusion at linebacker as to who should pick him up and he ended up getting cleared completely out. Shermer had time enough to allow Duncan to come all the way across the football easy conversion that was where 
on the previous possessions in this half. The Tennessee defense was able to get a stop. Now the Commodores knocking on the door of the red zone. Shermer has time. Over the middle, touchdown, Tennessee. Trent Sherfield, 20 yards out. The third touchdown pass of the evening for Kyle Shermer. I mean, I've been so impressed with Shermer in this ball game. And we've seen him convert when he had to tuck and scramble. He's shown that awareness with blindside pressure, evading that pressure, getting rid of the football, being smart with it. But when he's had time, even with the pocket collapsing at times, he's been able to deliver strikes downfield to this receiver field. Point after is up and good. There is a flag. Tennessee's early Outside. again. Defense number 18. That penalty is declined. The try is good. So nine plays, 75 yards. Six-minute drive. Kyle Shermer getting it done. We talk about the Vanderbilt offense here in the second half. It took a while, but finally Kyle Shermer able to find his groove and find the end zone. Vanderbilt has taken an 11 point lead early in the fourth quarter 14 20 to play in this one. Kyle Shermer with three touchdown passes Shermer on the afternoon has put together a pretty good day 18 of 29 265 three TDs and no picks Openshaw will kick it away Chandler back to return this kick he'll be boy he completely misjudged that one he was standing at the goal line hit it to three now listen some news to talk about here with Shermer because if you go back to the end of the third quarter he got sacked and he came up after this play holding his left arm And then you could see him after the touchdown pass a moment ago goes right into the medical tent to be checked on by the medical staff of Vanderbilt. And we saw Randall Wayne Wallace, better known as Deuce, their backup quarterback, getting loose. We've been talking about Kyle Sherman, how well he has played throughout this game. This is a game changer for Vanderbilt. You see Deuce Wallace, not a ton of experience this year. And a guy that might be forced into service here in the fourth quarter playing with a lead. That ball is incomplete. Looking for Brandon Johnson. Trey Herndon on the coverage. Now, Trey Herndon. He had a chance to make, come up with an interception here. That ball, not only did he strip it out of Brandon Johnson's hands, but it kind of was batted around. Almost came up with a quick turnover in a short field. Tennessee, they're ready to play. Vanderbilt getting caught in a substitution. Ended up freezing the cadence and looking over to the sideline. Garantano gets it off to Jordan, a true freshman. Out to the 25 at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down coming up. Well, that time was a pretty good decision by Garantano because they were trying to kind of fake a screen, a screen and go. And he just kind of baited a little bit. It was good coverage downfield, so he came right back to Jordan. He was able to get at least enough yards to get back. And you see Kyle Shermer there. Looks like he's going to be all right, moving that left arm where, you know, after that last series, he was holding his left arm pretty awkwardly. Pass is caught. Well shy of the line to make. It goes to Callaway. They'll spot it at the 27-yard line. Williams making the play for the Commodores. And you can hear some frustration from the crowd here. You know, we talked about it coming out at half. John Kelly has been completely eliminated from this football game. This time he hit Callaway across the, across the formation. Jawan Williams coming up, making a nice tackle. No yards after the catch there. 
and the volunteer offense having to punt the football away yet again. Trevor Daniel back to punt it away. Lipscomb will return it for Vanderbilt. And just another booming kick. Lipscomb inside the 20 and great coverage by the Volunteers. A 52-yard punt. Vandy will have the football. They're up 11 on the road. Well, welcome back to Knoxville. Vandy leading Tennessee 28 to 17 right now. Kyle Shermer spent some time in the injury tent, a left arm injury. He is okay. He's good to go. The athletic trainer took just a couple of minutes, grabbed some extra thick padding and scissors, headed into the injury tent. Shermer was out and ready to go after that. All right. Looks like he's still favoring that left arm, however. There's his father, the offensive coordinator for the Vikings. Off this weekend, Matt Shermer has been in the NFL for a long, long time, and he has watched his son put together a, a nice evening here in Neyland Stadium. Ralph Webb stutter steps through the hole. Another big gainer for number seven. Nigel Warrior drags him down, but 17 more yards for the senior. Great push by the Vandy front and nice jump cut by Ralph Webb to set up this run. You know, right there at the point of attack, there wasn't much room. And number seven showing some nimbleness there. Watch this cut, boom. Gets both feet back down in the ground and gets upfield quickly, squirts right through that hole to get this offense jump started. We'll go back to Webb. He's hit at the 48 drop there by Micah Abernathy. Again, though, Vanderbilt able to capture the edge quickly and get pulling linemen out in front. There's one back offenses. You're able to pull offensive linemen. They act almost like lead blockers, especially when you get out there on the perimeter, even into the boundary. You're able to get up and downfield and lead your running back into the alley pick up those yards on the outside. Webb tried to get that first down. He'll be right on the line to make. Webb came into this game with 4,010 yards, top 10 in the conference, all-time ninth. He has moved up to seventh. He could move up to sixth. What's his total today? Ralph Webb is up to 127. On third and short, he's in the game again this time. And gets it easily. He needs about 25 more yards, and he can move up to sixth place all time. And supplant Eric Rett. Well, that's a name that should ring bells for a kid from Gainesville, Florida be able to eclipse the career rushing yards of Eric Rett, one of the all-timers in this conference's history. As Justin Martin jaws his way off the field after being injured. Well, we got a break here. Let's uh, get an update from Dari. Guys, it is 14 seconds from over right now. This is a fourth down and 22 attempt. Jalen Hurts passes the line of scrimmage, passes incomplete anyway. Auburn is going to beat Alabama and head to Atlanta to face Georgia. Well, and, and let the hand wringing begin nationally, right? Because everybody else outside of this conference is going, there's no way you should allow two teams from the same conference in. Big hole off the left side for Rivers. First down inside the 35, down to the 30-yard line. Well, Auburn will head to Atlanta. Mercedes-Benz Stadium will play host to the championship game of the SEC for the first time. Jared Stidham, 237 yards through the air. And it sets up a rematch with the Georgia Bulldogs. And that was an ugly game. Yes. Once again, you know, you've seen, if you're a fan of Auburn, you've seen the last couple of home games and Jordan Hare, does it get any better? 
for what they saw in a dominating victory over Georgia. And then a 12 point win over Alabama. There's not going to be any more. There's not going to be any toilet paper. Georgia Pacific is going to have to work overtime after Toomer's Corner. It's going to look like it snowed down there. They will have rolled that thing so heavily. Crank up the bidets. A toilet paper shortage in Alabama. Webb now with 140 yards. She has 95 here in the second half. He'll go with Rivers again off the right side. By the way, uh, Ralph Webb needs 14 more yards to move to sixth all time. In SEC history, and he'll come back into the game. Yeah, you know, Vanderbilt is in, this is almost like four minute drill mentality. You got eight minutes, 40 plus seconds, clock's running, an 11 point lead, and you're just trying to take your opponent's will. We're just going to pound our way down the football field. We've thrown it most of the game, and now we're going to see if we can't bludgeon you into the end zone once more. Not just bleeding clock, but you're just bleeding the defense right now. Quick hitter near side. Lipscomb dancing around and gets it to the 11-yard line. Batuli making the stop. Seven tackles for Daniel Batuli. Came in leading the team with 78 stops. Well, Vandy punches it in right here. If you're Tennessee, you know you missed your chances. You had two fourth down stops in third quarter and an opportunity to close the gap and even take a lead, and you only came away with a field goal. Vanderbilt was able to kind of weather that storm and get in the end zone once more, and then you know, you're putting in this clock milking drive. Another extra lineman in the formation. Be surprised they don't run power right. They do. And Webb pushed out of bounds, and he'll end up losing a yard. Just good job that time getting strung out to the sideline. Ralph Webb, he's put together a pretty good performance though in this game. Already gone well north of the 100-yard mark and still pounding away at the volunteer defense. Tenth play of this drive coming up. Third down and five. The slant over the middle. Is it touchdown? They're going to say down at the one. Down at the one yard line is Sherfield. I don't know. I don't know. I think Sherfield was able to get it in there. You know, if he gets his hand down, that doesn't establish you as down. So see his up, hands down. Up, up, and touchdown. Oh, yeah. I don't think his left knee ever touched the grass. I mean, it glided just above the grass. Nope. Touchdown. Yeah, that's six. What an effort by Sherfield. His second touchdown grab, if they score it that way. And that would be the fourth for Shermer. Third time this year, Shermer would have four touchdown passes in a game. What a drive by this Vanderbilt offense. You see the catch again by Sherfield. Great effort. That left hand buys him another three yards. And that left knee just gliding above the grass. After the review, the ruling on the field is reversed to a touchdown score by Vanderbilt. It's a good job by the replay booth. They've had to work a couple of times today. They've done a good job of making sure they get the spots right and the lines the game right. And Sherfield, tremendous effort, able to get that slant route into the end zone and an authoritative drive by the Vandy offense, fueled largely by the ground game. Shermer with 283 yards through the air, four touchdowns, no interceptions, and with 644 to go. That may have just put this one to bed.
Vanderbilt's offense. 468 yards. Tennessee 178. Point after is up and good. Tennessee, their first two drives, man, they were just cruising today. But they have gotten stuck in the mud. And when we come back, we will ask Mr. Stinchcomb who he thinks the SEC's Offensive Player of the Year should be. There's plenty of candidates. Stay with us to find out. Thirty five seventeen our score Vanderbilt out in front Kyle Schirmer having a heck of a game which leads me to this question stitch SEC offensive player of the year. Well, you got two finalists right there and have has any really one player meant anything more to their teams prospects of having success than these two guys Nick Fitzgerald and carry on Johnson. They were uh, very impressive and uh, Nick Fitzgerald a tough injury. In the Egg Bowl on Thursday night uh, sorry to see that happen to a very talented and fine young man hopefully he'll respond but who is your winner as I, SEC offensive player of the year I went with keep calm and carry on Johnson a guy that really ignited the Auburn offense they kind of struggled early on he was banged up didn't get to play Clemson Mercer and when he was reinserted into their offensive lineup he exploded onto the scene an incredibly productive versatile player you look at the numbers leading this conference in rushing yards per game, leads them in rushing touchdowns, which is what matters the most. Get it in the end zone. Number 21 for Auburn, who incidentally looked like he got a little bit banged yeah. up tonight. At 104 in yards Auburn. and a touchdown. A lot of wear and tear, though. He's had a ton of carries when he's been in there. That one's picked off on the far side. Tra uh, who got that? Number three, Troy and Ferguson. Bounce right into his arms. Is that a microcosm of the season for Tennessee? I mean, maybe you come out here. This game's probably out of hand. Seven minutes to play, though. You come out throwing. See if you can't stage a drive. Climb your way back into this one with limited resources from a time standpoint, and you get a turnover right away. First pick in the last three games for this Vandy secondary and only their second in the last eight games. And what are the odds of it coming off of what has been the most sure handed receiver for this Tennessee wide receiving core in Brandon Johnson. The one catch he did isn't capable of coming up with it ends up being a turnover. And if you're Vandy offensively, you go right back to the nine on seven running drill. That was Dallas Rivers getting some work. Senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Here comes Ralph Webb back into the game. He'll replace Rivers. You know, there is the opportunity. If Vanderbilt wins this game and they go five and seven, if there aren't enough bowl eligible teams, then you start talking about APRs and yeah. you're... Saw it last year with Mississippi State, yeah. right? They kind of backdoored their way into it. Second down, and here is Ralph Webb off the left side. Ralph Webb inside the five. Give him a touchdown. And he has just moved into sixth place all time in career rushing yards of the Southeastern Conference with his second rushing touchdown of the day. That's no secret what Vanderbilt was going to look to do. They've done it on a number of different other runs this game. We'll go unbalanced to one side of the offensive line to bring in an extra offensive lineman. And then they just run power right at you. And Ralph Webb able to get into the end zone once again. What a day for Mr. Webb. Old number seven wrapping up his career in fine fashion. Folks. He may not get the credit he deserves, but he has been a joy to watch in his career. You talk about a workhorse. He was a show pony in this one and has been the last three times he's faced Tennessee. Ralph Webb, touchdown.
$29.99 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. 42-17, Ralph Webb behind those Vanderbilt jerseys. There he is. First time he's been covered up all day. Has 159 yards on the ground, and because of that effort, he just supplanted Eric Rett for sixth all-time. He is just outside the five. Look at the names on that list. I mean, that is crazy. Just to be included amongst some of those rushers, you got LSU with a couple of names, Georgia with a couple of names, and then you got Ralph Webb in there. And as we mentioned, too, you know, it wasn't like he was on some explosive offenses. Right. And you kind of knew what Vanderbilt wanted to do. And he had to kind of grind his way to that career mark. Coming up 7.30, right here on the SEC Network. SEC Saturday night, 18th ranked LSU and Texas A&M from Death Valley. Like I said, also streaming live on the ESPN app. LSU has dominated this series. They have won the past six games, all five since Texas A&M joined the league back in 2012. And, you know, so much out there on Kevin Sumlin's future at Texas A&M. Who knows what will hold when well, that one's all said and done. There's Callaway with a catch and a flag comes in. Yeah, it looked like there was a report earlier out of the studio that the decision had been made, or at least reports, that Kevin Sumlin out at Texas A&M. So you're looking at yet another opening here in the conference. Get it ball, Jay. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 30. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Of all the jobs out there that are available in this league, just this league, and there are a lot of jobs nationally, but in this league, where would be the best job? I mean, if you're a coach, you're going, okay, that's the one I want. As far as the ability to compete at a high level, Florida. Yeah. You go to Florida. You know, to me, you're, you're talking about in, in the East Division where there's opportunity abound. You've got resources. The best facilities that any football coach will have ever enjoyed are now there in Gainesville. Now, Jim McElwain, you know, he kind of had to complain his way to get them, but they got them now. And they got the recruits. There's no arguing that. You still have to develop those relationships down there. But there, to me, there's, there's really no argument. Now, what comes with that are incredibly high expectations. And... If you need an exhibit, take a look at the fact that there's even an opening there two and a half seasons, two and a half seasons away or removed from hiring Jim McElwain on back-to-back -back division titles. But, you know, you look at A&M, that thing comes open. Well, LSU came open a year ago, ended up being occupied permanently by an interim head coach, Annette Ogeron. The turnover in this conference is pretty remarkable. You know, the dean of coaches in the SEC East is Mark Stoops. That's kind of hard to wrap your head around that. The other thing that's kind of hard to wrap your head around is Tennessee losing eight games yeah. in a season. This is history. There's only two programs, Ohio State being the other. You have never lost eight games in one year. Throwback to the tight end, Ethan Wolf. And the senior playing in his final game will get a touchdown from 20 yards out. His third touchdown grab of 2017. That was a little too easy if you're a Vanderbilt fan. Yeah, it went right down the field. He almost assisted down the field. <laughs> you know the name we kept popping up earlier. When Don was holding the fans here was Dan Mullen. So potentially even within the conference, another job opens up if that's the case and becomes the name here at Tennessee. Garantano to Wolf. 42-24, our score. How about the Auburn Tigers taking down Alabama, setting up a rematch with the Georgia Bulldogs in the SEC championship game next Saturday afternoon in Atlanta, Georgia. And Auburn put it on Georgia in their regular season meeting. What does that mean for this game? We'll find out 
in a week. You know, we said earlier on in the season, the way this was shaping up, as you see kind of the particulars of this game, you know, the all-time championship records in the SEC, Georgia two and three, Auburn three and two. They contended for two national titles, won one of them. Georgia's never gotten it. 2012 had an opportunity, lost to an Alabama team that year. Onside kick on the way, and it is recovered by Vanderbilt. So here comes Vanderbilt's offense trying to close this one out. 426 to play. Last year, this uh, Vanderbilt team took down Tennessee 45-34 and it made the Commodores Bowl eligible. They won't be able to do that this year. Both teams coming in with four and seven records. As we get a look at Deuce Wallace. Appropriate that he wears number two. And Ralph Webb. In at running back in the I formation as Vandy will just try to run this one into the ground. Webb will pick up three and a half. This Tennessee team is going to go 0 and 8 in conference play. I mean, you just. That's another history making. It's, it's just hard to put your arms around that one. This year, you know, it's. You see this every once in a while in some of these programs. You know, you, you know, Coach Coach Chiswick had to be a part of a 2012 year in Auburn. It was kind of historic for all the wrong reasons where you, know, you see teams, programs that seem to be on solid footing. It's easy for it to get away from you sometimes. And that's what happened here. That'll be a first down. Wakefield with the carry. You know, if you go back to 2011, the Commodores and the Vols until today have identical records in SEC play. They came in both 16 and 39 in conference play since 2011. Each team has only had one winning SEC season. Vandy went five and three and 12. Tennessee went five and three and 15. I mean, it's, I, Vandy has had some, you know, their struggles here in the last 30 years in this conference. But you start thinking about, this is Tennessee. No, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, just looking around this stadium, the national championships that have been won here. You know, the fact that this is this is a pillar, one of those kind of pillar programs within the conference. And, you know, you talk about cycles and that sort of thing, but, you know, it has been a program that has been trying to find its footing, you know, ever since Coach Fulmer was let yeah. go here. You know, you... You and I have bantered about about the Bama effect. And since Nick Saban has got into this league, I think it was 32 something in that neighborhood, 32 different head coaches have rolled through this conference since 2007. And, you know, you're looking at a, a program there, which obviously went down today with their only loss in the season to Auburn. But then it's kind of reset the bar, and it's reset the bar in such a way where everyone else is chasing. And it's not that it's not attainable. But in the meantime, there's been a ton of churn, a lot of turmoil and turbulence created since 2007. I mean, you look at the numbers. I mean, it's impacting both sides of the conference. <laughs> that is incredible. That's actually, I said 30, it's 36 different head coaches. Yeah, you undershot it there. I mean, that's a little conservative crazy. With that number. I mean, it is. It's, it, it really is amazing. And you're looking at, you know, Tennessee, obviously, the intra-conference permanent rival of the wrong program right now in Alabama. Of course, we only we mentioned Wakefield. the two late additions, Missouri and A&M, since they joined the league, their coaching totals. Obviously, A&M now experiencing their turnover. Obviously, uh, Kevin it's like, so it's, you say that like it's just a matter of fact, like it's going to happen. Yes. They're experiencing I mean, their turnover. Here it comes. I mean, <laughs> Whose turn is it right. on the carousel? And, well, and you, you almost wonder at some point in time, it's, it's not a fatalist mentality to say, no, we'll never catch up. But at some point, it's, there's an element of stability that needs to be established. When you look at you know, quick triggers in some programs, you know, it could turn off likely coaching candidates. Right. They might not want to jump into that. You know, I take this job. Yeah, there's opportunity, but yes, it comes with that as some expectations where I might not get time 
to develop what I think I can build. Well, this will be a good one for Derek Mason to build on because it, it has been a struggle, and I mean a big-time struggle here this season after they got off to that 3-0 start. They had dropped seven of their last eight, and this is one of those things that, you know, possibly, depending on the bowl teams, that, you know, maybe there's one more. We don't know yet, but they're going to finish up five and seven this year, and as he said to us this week, you know, it's been a disappointment because expectations were so high. Yeah. And you're going to lose some key players. I mean, losing a Ralph Webb is definitely going to hurt. No, there aren't many of those guys. Yeah, they're going to help. I mean, we just got done talking about he's one of the all-time best rushers in conference history. And, you know, on the other sideline, if you're Tennessee, you, know, you got some guys that you better hope come back. You know, we didn't say John Kelly's name much in this game. But the most important recruit that Tennessee could land next year is that guy. Make sure that he's back in your program another season a lot of young players that you can build around that potentially could stay in this program and this man at Derek Mason just got <laughs> just got the Gatorade bath more like water at time but ends his season on a high note and that will do it Vanderbilt has won four of the last six against Tennessee and they win this one 42 24 as they put up 529 yards and after Tennessee exploded the two early touchdowns they keep the ball to 238 yards of offense and Derek Mason and company will finish up five and seven meanwhile the volunteers will finish 2017 at four and eight well one what Vanderbilt wanted over the course of the year, especially on the heels of a bowl eligible season a year ago. But offensively and what they have in this quarterback, number 14, they're going to expect even more out of him a year from now. He has grown very much as a passer offensively. They got much better in the passing game. It'd be interesting to see what the Commodores can do in 2018. Let's go down to Dawn. I'm here with Ralph Webb, back-to-back -back wins over your rival, Tennessee. What a way to end your career. What are the emotions right now? Man, I'm at an all-time hot right now. Wouldn't want to do it at no other place here in Tennessee, you know, giving them their first eight-loss season. You know, it's just an honor to be able to play with these guys, you know. I got to give credit to my old line. They went out there and fought hard. The receivers blocked on the edge, you know, so all the credit to those guys. 163 yards, two touchdowns for you tonight. Let's what? go! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> hey, those guys did their job, man. The offensive line created holes for me to get through, and it was up to me to finish it on the second there. You leave Vanderbilt as the all-time career rushing leader. What does that mean to you? What does this career mean to you? You know, through God, anything is possible, along with hard work and dedication and perseverance, you know. I've had some tough times this season, but I just kept pushing through, you know, persevere. That we always talk about that and make sure I'm getting back to the middle. Never getting too high, never getting too low, and just keep pushing. Congratulations, Light. Go celebrate. Thank you. Woo! I love that. Is that not awesome? Ralph Webb enjoying the moment with his head coach, Derek Mason, as he finishes up his career sixth all time in the SEC in rushing yards. Vandy wins it 42 to 24 over the Tennessee Volunteers. Their next move for the Vols find a head coach. We'll come back with more from Knoxville, but first, let's head to the studio in Dari Noka.